Hello and let's talk about India's role at the World Health Assembly. The WHA is the governing body of the World Health Organization. The 73rd Assembly was held on May 18th and 19th and as you can guess, the major focus was on COVID-19. The US and some of its allies tried their best to blame China for the disease. The final resolution, however, did not name China or Wuhan and instead called for an independent probe into the origins and progress of the disease. There were many other developments too. Immunization was declared as a global public health good, but vaccines were not. This opens the door for vaccine firms to profit from the crisis, an outcome health activists have been warning against. Meanwhile, India was among the 10 countries elected to the executive board of the World Health Organization, and India's health minister Harshwardhan will be a chairman of the board for a year. However, at this World Health Assembly, India did not show much leadership, experts have pointed out. We talked to former ambassador MK Bhadra Kumar on this issue. Here's what he had to say. The position of India amid all this debate. So we have seen Prime Minister Modi has said that he's had conversation with some world leaders. But India has not occupied any of its traditional positions where it was a leader of the Global South or for that matter in the BRICS uh, countries have not come together in any meaningful way on this issue. So India is basically nowhere in the global discourse on this issue. Sadly, uh, enough. That is the truth. You have, uh, you have given an exact picture of what is happening. I will only add this to what you said, that not only that, India has ganged up with the United States. You may, not, may know that exactly one week ago, when this uh, opinion was building up in the world community and the United States was getting very acutely conscious that it is being isolated, Pompeo took the initiative to at least to have a few people around the United States so that they don't feel lonesome. I think five countries or something like that joined this endeavor on COVID, specifically on COVID, cooperation on COVID. India was one of them. I mean, I was absolutely shocked that India was one of them. Now, India has uh, so much of opportunity today, in fact, you know, to take over a leadership role because we have a fairly developed pharma industry. If I were in a leadership position, what do I do? I would work very closely with China and try and see if I can create an atmosphere where this vaccine can also be produced in India. Like some uh, enterprising entrepreneur in uh, Pune or Bangalore managed to do with a research, uh, researchers in Oxford University. So similarly, you could have done it. And India has a great tradition in uh, pharmacology. Now, this is the kind of thing India could have done and India could have joined hands with China in making this vaccine and other related drugs at affordable prices to the developing countries. Now, this is the kind of role which India was uniquely, India is uniquely placed to uh, perform. And uh, you know, it would immensely, it would raise India's stature. Now, what do we have here? Yeah, you have the external affairs minister making a few telephone calls, then distributing, so what is that called, that hydrochloroxin, whatever drug? Hydroxychloroquine. Yes, yes, to a few chaps here and there. And you know, this is, this is India's role. And then Prime Minister tutoring now and then, you know, with Trump, that we will fight shoulder to shoulder. They're struggling there in the United States. And what is there to fight? You know, we should have actually not gone on these lines with a certain vision that this is a challenge and this is also an opportunity for India to play a global role. We've, we've just goofed up completely. Now, the only good thing is that in this World Health Assembly, a new executive body has been elected and India has been elected. So now even now you look what is the kind of backing, the sentiments, the groundswell of opinion favoring India in the, in the, among the developing countries, African countries and so on. So it's on that basis that India got elected into the executive council. Russia is also there in the executive council. And Russia also has a similar approach towards this, that this vaccine should be universally available. So work together 
Now build on that, but I really don't know whether we will ever do that because that means, you know, crossing swords with Trump. Because this is uh, going to be disturbing Trump's pharma industry connections. So, you know, I, I can't understand why, you know, what is this policy? There is no policy. The overall tilt there to the, the pivot to the United States, you know, that has become very pronounced through the last uh, couple of years is plain to see, especially after this in the second term, is plain to see. I think the external affairs minister is interested basically only in developing a relationship with the United States. That is India's foreign policy today, as far as I can see. So in that uh, line, whatever fits in, fits in. Otherwise, we are not interested. This has come to be the policy. It's, it's very tragic. Thank you so much, Ambassador Badrakuma, for talking to us. In our next section, we bring you a report from Chennai, which describes the state of migrant workers. Chennai has been among the worst affected cities by the disease, and migrant workers there face a variety of problems. Take a look. जय बावरी है हम लोग पंद्रह लोग है इस जगह में चेन्नई में कारो को एड्रेस है हम लोग कई दिन से यहाँ पे फंसे हुए हैं और लगभग 52 डेज हुआ है हम लोग यहाँ पे फंसे हुए हैं यहाँ पे पैसा खाना ज़्यादातर नहीं मिल रहा है बहुत प्रॉब्लम हो चुकी है काम स्टार्ट हो चुका है लेकिन एक दिन के बाद वो तीन दिन बैठे दिन के पड़ चुका है हम लोगों को लेकिन ऐसे तो नहीं चलेगा इसलिए आप टेन भी नहीं चल हुआ घर जाने के लिए कोशिश कर रहे हैं इसलिए कोई भी अगर हेल्प हो सके आप लोगों से ये मैं विनती कर सक कर रहा हूँ तमिलनाडु सरकार हम लोग का कुछ हेल्प कीजिए खाना उना अच्छा से नहीं मिल रहा है पेमेंट भी दो मंथ से नहीं मिला है कुछ हेल्प कीजिए नमस्ते जी मैं मदन कुमार महातो मैं चेन्नई में फंस गया हूँ सन चेन्नई को जो सरकार है हम लोग का प्लीज़ हेल्प कीजिए हम लोग का बहुत दिक्कत में है चेन्नई में फंस गया हम लोग का खाना बना कुछ नहीं मिल रहा है हम लोग बहुत प्रॉब्लम में है लेकिन कुम पानी चालू हुआ लेकिन चार दिन बाद एक एक दिन डिब्डी मिल रहा है लेकिन हम लोग का दो महीना से पैसा पैसा कुछ नहीं हम लोग के पास बहुत दिक्कत में है लेकिन आप लोग आप लोग व्यवस्था कीजिए जल तड़ा तड़ी जल्दी से घर जाने का बहुत हम लोग का बहुत प्रॉब्लम है यहाँ पर फंस गया हूँ दो महीना से as well as in ancillary services of various kinds from uh, uh, hospitality to hotels to tea shops to all kinds of work including housekeeping and security services. So the, the volume of migrant workers has also increased and also the geographical spread across Tamil Nadu. But even today one can uh, with certain certainty tell them that the, uh, the, most of the migrant workers are located in the commercial and industrial hub. So that is like Chennai, Chennai and the surroundings, Coimbatore, Tirupur is a major draw for because of the garment industry, the clothing industry there. And uh, in the south you have Madurai is uh, uh, one of the sources and then you have some amount of spread including in say for example towns like Nagapatinam which is a tourist district and, uh, and also a religious pilgrimage center. And uh, you have a lot of migrants doing very, very petty jobs there, like own account work. So, the, from being a very small pocket of labor around Chennai, migrants have come to basically man the entire uh, production terrain of Tamil Nadu, which has become very, very increasingly starkly uh, true 
when uh, the government is now trying to deal with this whole exodus of migrants back to their home states. Because restarting industries, restarting economic activity seems to be much more difficult in the absence of migrants. Uh, because I think the lockdown was also announced on Monday or Tuesday and uh, they had not been even paid for a, for a week or two weeks before that because of the lack of jobs. So it was immediate. And the government had no clue what to do. Like both the central government and the state government had no clue what to do. And uh, the next thing was the issue of rents that they were facing. Because in a, in a, in a couple of weeks, the you know, March became uh, uh, April, and uh, the rents were due, and the workers were getting really uh, troubled by the fact that uh, they would be demands on rent. There were demands on rent, not as much, but there were demands on rent, and that was creating change. And thirdly, and the, and the government had no answer to that. The government could put on these big rules saying, no, no, no need to pay rent, etc. But this is not a very streamlined process where the government has actually any say. These are small uh, house owners demanding rent from uh, even weaker migrant sections. And uh, it is all in the informal sector. So nobody has any records of it. Nobody knows who is demanding what. So effectively, the government couldn't do much even in that, that case. And uh, wage payments for the lockdown period was another major issue. These workers were sitting not because of their own pollution. It was not as if they had withdrawn from work. These people wanted work. They were guaranteed work. And yet, because of the government order, they did have work. And uh, the companies couldn't pay for the lockdown period. Many companies refused to pay for the lockdown period. And that was another major thing. And eventually we come to the issue of transport back home, where still uh, states like Kamanad, and also there, this is not an issue just of Kamanad state. Like the central government is not very cooperative in this regard, wrangling about the price of trains, etc. The host, the native state, they are unprepared to receive large volumes of workers coming back from COVID infected areas. And the Tamil Nadu also is not very comfortable or willing to send these workers back because they want to reach that business. So they are also drawing it up. And what it has amounted to is like thousands and thousands of migrant workers willing to take thousand kilometer journeys back to Tarkan, Bengal, Odisha on foot. In this regard, uh, we and I'm part of a COVID uh, citizens fund for migrant laborers. We have set up a helpline on the very first day of the lockdown because we anticipated this would happen. But we never thought that this would be in good scale. We would be called in to work at this scale. So uh, after a few weeks of this work of uh, calling in to migrant workers to find out what they want, we thought that we need to be consolidated and the town may need to be modified about what the needs of these workers are. So we did a survey and uh, one primary question in that was how many people want to return home? And uh, we came up with a, like uh, our survey revealed that 95% of the workers wanted to go home. And uh, starkly, even 75% of the workers wanted to go home even if they have jobs, even if jobs come back. Which means basically they were not trusting that the jobs will last. And they felt much more comfortable being back home in these trying times of COVID. And uh, it is only natural to expect that people want to go back home in a crisis, especially where there is a lot of threat, both health-wise and financially, in cities like Chennai. And uh, in another interesting part, the story was that over 63 percent of the workers had not been paid wages; their wages were due, and um, around. Rather less than half of them were being demanded of rent, etc. So, in this scenario, we, we kind of uh, sent it out to the government. I don't know what effect it had. We kind of immediately come up with some reactive part to it. Uh, but it revealed to us a vast threat for wages, wage debt that has happened in the name of COVID. Because there was no reason why people should not have been paid wage for March. I understand the lockdown period, whether you want to pay the wage, not the wage, is a legal tangle, you don't have working capital, etc. But for March, people have worked. And many of them have not received. So this has resulted in 
over time a lot of protests across various sites and uh, workers have also been protesting against the fact that some of them are not being allowed to go back uh, one due to the lack of transportation two because the contractors do not want them to leave they want to restart the business and they think that by holding them back they will have a large worker base from which to restart and ramp up business and construction activity so this has created a lot of tension among the workers and there have been a number of protests so some of the major ones were in kurankulam where a major well established contractor like lnt was involved something at the village and finally those workers are being sent home uh, another case that we came about was lnw lnw workers are now going back home but lnw is another major contractor in construction activities workers were quite agitated for lack of wage payments and the, the lack of transportation to go home they had involved in, like one group had decided to walk they walked the wrong way they were caught by the police put into camps and uh, another group got onto the street and there was major protest on the streets of chennai so but these things have in fact had some effect because more trains are being uh, allowed and most of these workers who are brought into these labor camps are being sent back home wages remain the problem especially not for small groups large groups are able to fight it out we are able to amplify their voice put it out on social media and some amount of success is possible but small groups like four five people working in hotel working in shops that have now closed down in fact there is an it company bay area property developers who have not paid wages it's been a long standing fight and uh, many of the hundred odd workers have not been paid wages they have returned and now the labor department is insisting that for them to take these cases they will have to wait till this covid crisis is over because they don't have max power to take up these cases so these have been the primary struggles for workers in this uh, uh, period and uh, it was also revealed in our uh, survey and uh, the government has primarily failed them by not being there at all like uh, this whole covid crisis has been dealt as some sort of medical emergency not as a larger social emergency because of the measures that the government has taken to this when you stop employment when you are not having proper guidance you don't want to we be we 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 might not have known how many workers are there to like some other states but we know that it was always a large proportion of the workers and yet we were not protected and this crisis is also a consequence of what the government had not done for a long period of time because activist labor unions and also uh researchers have been saying that the registration of migrants are very minimal they are not being registered fully even under the interstate migrant protection act it is a insignificant proportion and these people need to be brought into the welfare board system or some form of registration system so that we know how many of them are there but the government drags its feet all along and uh, today when you if you are uh, surprised about these numbers and un- unable to frame uh, a scheme or a policy or even allocate funds for it who is to do it you drag your feet for 10 years so that has been a major problem and now i think trains are being rushed up because of the pressure that the workers and so it's got on the ground and we hope that the issues are resolved soon and the uh, That's all we have in this episode of Let's Talk. We'll be back tomorrow with the latest news developments of the day. Until then, keep watching News Click.